1939, Germany invades Poland and officially makes the start of World War II, September 1939. In 1941, they bombed Pearl Harbor and the United States gets involved. But believe it or not, it was also strongly believed that the first actual initiation of World War II actually happened right here in the Pacific in 1931 when Japan invaded Manchuria, a northern province of China. Now at the time, the two great powers, which were the United States and Great Britain, did nothing to stop the Japanese aggression on Manchuria because Manchuria didn't have much to offer. Basically, they lacked natural resources, right? Until Japan decided to invade mainland China in 1937. And that's when the United States and our allies decided to respond. Because at the time, mainland China was very rich in natural resources and it was divided into ports that were called the spheres of influences in the Pacific. Now these spheres of influences were ports given by the Chinese government to these Western nations. For example, the United States had Shanghai, the Portuguese had Macau, and with the British already winning the opium war between them and China, the British had already obtained Hong Kong. So the United States and our allies didn't want Japan to control what we wanted to control so we told them to get out. The Japanese didn't want to get out of China, so the Americans told them, if you guys don't get out of China, we will stop selling you oil. And at the time, the United States was selling Japan about 80% of their conceived oil. We also told them that we would start to freeze their assets here in the States. And on top of all that, we would declare war. Now at first, the Japanese did not want war with the United States, but being conformed to their own agendas, they basically told the Americans, do what you gotta do. Has anyone ever heard of uh, Hirohito? Mm -hmm. Hirohito, the emperor of Japan, right? Yeah. Well, he was emperor at that time. Although Hirohito was emperor, he had very little power in Japan, believe it or not. For most of the power of the Japanese empire rested in the hands of their military which was ran by General Hidake Tojo. Now, General Tojo was a very smart general, and he knew that in order for the Japanese to gain advantage in the Pacific, they would have to first neutralize the United States Pacific Fleet. So, he had ordered one of his top admirals, Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto, to devise an attack to destroy the United States Pacific Fleet. Where Admiral Yamamoto wasn't a stupid man either. Believe it or not, a graduate with honors from Harvard University, who also worked as an attaché in Washington, D.C. for years, Amo Yamamoto had known the potential of the United States. He had known that maybe at the time, the United States wasn't much of a threat from a military standpoint, because during those days, in the 20s and 30s, America was still busy rebuilding their economy busy building cars and houses and businesses. But Yamamoto knew, and Yamamoto told the Japanese Empire that if the United States was ever provoked, they could easily go from that civilian-based economy to a military-based economy in a matter of months. Which, as a matter of fact, that's exactly what happened, right? After the attack of Pearl Harbor, in about 15 months, the United States went from building cars and houses to building tanks and battleships. Men went to fight, women went to work in the factories, making the United States one of the more powerful countries in the world. Now, though Yamamoto knew something like this was going to happen, he still had to carry out his orders. So he planned the attack. And one of the more brilliant attacks it was. He had told the Japanese Empire that this attack on Pearl Harbor would not be led with battleships like most attacks from the ocean were at that time. Now, this attack. This attack would be led with aircraft carriers. Why aircraft carriers and not battleships? Because battleships had only a maximum firing range of about 26 miles, which meant they would have to port within the 26 mile radius and start their attack. By the time they did that, Pearl Harbor would already have detected them and been able to <laughs> defend themselves. The attempt would have been futile. No, Yamamoto said that we were to do any type of damage to the United States Pacific Fleet, the element of surprise must be our closest ally. Aircraft carriers can port 
300 miles away from the enemy, they sent our fighter planes and bombers in to destroy the target before they even realized that we were there. And that's exactly what they did. On November 26, 1941, the Japanese left Japan with six aircraft carriers, an entire fleet of battleships, destroyers, submarines, and over 400 fighter planes and bombers. They arrived here in Hawaii Sunday morning, December 7th, 1941. A date which will live in infamy. First wave of attack came flying over those mountains at a one o'clock, the Y9 mountain range. 183 Japanese fighter planes and bombers in the first wave. As soon as they cleared the horizon of Pearl Harbor, the commander rang, Tora, 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 Tiger, 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 which was a signal to attack. They had achieved the element of surprise. 7.50 a.m., they started bombing, filling Pearl Harbor waters with torpedoes. They hit the USS Maryland, the West Virginia, the Tennessee. They hit the USS Utah. The Utah capsized, claiming over 50 lives with her. And about 30 minutes later, Second wave arrives, coming over these mountains off here to our right, the Ko'olau mountain range. 167 Japanese fighter planes and bombers, and they commenced the attack as well. It continuously hit the USS Utah. The Utah capsized as well as the USS Oklahoma. The Oklahoma also capsized, claiming over 400 lives with her. They had tried to hit the USS Arizona with a torpedo, but on port side of the USS Arizona, was the USS Vessel, a repair ship, which took two torpedoes for the Arizona. That ship sank as well, claiming 12 engineers that were trapped on board. On starboard side of the Arizona was Ford Island, a lone island in the middle of Pearl Harbor, a docking station for Battleship Row. They couldn't get the Arizona with a torpedo, so instead they hit her from the top with a special armor-piercing bomb that went right through the main deck of the ship. It cut through four more levels to finally landing in the ship's bow, igniting over a million pounds of gunpowder that was on board. Part of the ship's forward magazine. That, and of course, there were men because of their courage and their bravery. In all actuality, most of them, most of them were still only boys. 18, 19, 20 year old boys. The youngest one, believe it or not, still only 17. Their futures and their lives destroyed forever. Another attack on Pearl Harbor was very devastating. What's found to be just as devastating that morning was major mistakes made by the United States Pacific Fleet here that probably could have saved thousands of lives out here in Pearl Harbor. Like, did you know that the first wave of the Japanese attack were actually detected almost an hour before the attack even happened? The attack started at approximately 7.50 a.m. At about 7 o'clock a.m. that very same hour, a radar on the north end of the island detected a huge mass of planes coming in from the north. When the soldiers at the radar station report to headquarters, you know what the commanders at headquarters told them? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. They're just B-17s coming in from California on their way to the Philippines. They thought they were our own planes. The commanders at that time had a different agenda at hand. I did not believe that the Japanese would make the journey to Pearl Harbor to attack us. Rather, they believed that our concern should be the Japanese Americans living here on the island, for they could easily betray us and sabotage. So that mindset, these commanders ordered all the US fighter planes to be parked in open fields, wingtip to wingtip, nose to tail, with no ammunition and no fuel in them. That was the first thing that the Japanese destroyed. Completely crippled our air defense.
amongst the mistakes that were made out here in December 7, 1941, the United States Pacific Fleet were able to recoup, recover. The news of the attack spread through our country like wildfire. Battles in the Pacific concluded. Anyone ever heard of the Battle of Iwo Jima? Battle of Okinawa? Guadalcanal, Coral Seas, Philippines, Midway? Millions of lives lost before this thing was over here in the Pacific as well. The Battle of Midway was a turning point in the war for the United States and our allies. That's why we found and destroyed four of the six Japanese aircraft carriers that were involved with the Pearl Harbor bombing. From then on, the momentum shifted in our favor, and we had the Japanese on the run. Chased them out of the Pacific, all the way through Asia, then back to Japan. Then, through the kamikaze attacks, to finally, President Truman giving two orders. He had ordered two atomic bombs to be dropped on Japan. One on the city of Nagasaki, and the other on the city of Hiroshima. Ending one of the most expensive wars in the history of our world. How expensive? Over 55 million lives worth. Over 55 million people around the world lost their lives. Cousins.